Nope. Welcome to the newest indoor adventure in the Four Keeps, Origin, Part 2. Today is June 21st, 2021, and you are loved. That is a very important thing that we like to remind each and every single one of our viewers and listeners at the beginning of each and every single one of these games. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash indoor adventures to check up on all of the VODs of each of the games that we have played up until this point, including full playthroughs of Tyrant Security, Tomb of Annihilation, Ghost of Salt Marsh, Curse of Strahd, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, and also now our Masks the Green Sun miniseries. That miniseries is over. All of the episodes are available on YouTube as well as anywhere audio casts are made available for free. And speaking of things that are being made available for free, you can go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures where we where you can check up on our after show called Nights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from the community, but also from each other. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask myself or any of these other fine folk, feel free to join us on that Patreon. The link can be found in the description of this Twitch chat to the side or in the link uh, or there's a link available in the description down below of this video or audio cast wherever you happen to be watching. Um, but if you already support us on Patreon, you already support us on YouTube and Twitch and all of those other great places, and you're trying to think to yourself, where can I go to help support this wonderful show even more? Guess what, buddy? I got your back. Quite literally, in fact, because if you go to indooradventure.redbubble.com, we got t-shirts, we got posters, we got mugs, we got crop tops, throw pillows, shower curtains, aprons, clocks... And most importantly, we also have face masks. That's right, we have Tia masks, masks with the symbol of Tiamat upon them, designed by our very own Cyberwolf1201, where all of the proceeds end up going to help support Doctors Without Borders. And we also recently launched a Pride line. So we have mugs, t-shirts, posters, books, stickers, all of those kinds of wonderful things available in a variety of pride themed uh you are loved symbols it is the hand it is the heart hands uh designed by our very own danae keener with a pride flag in the midst uh but it's not just the base pride we have uh we have flags for uh lesbian pride ace bi uh non-binary trans. trans all of those wonderful things but if you see one that's not there uh let us know we'll add that flag in and the proceeds from all of our pride line until the end of the month go directly to help support lambert house so if you would like to help support a good cause or possibly help support the show you can again go to indooradventure.redbubble.com that is indoor adventure no s at the end dot redbubble.com before we begin cost thank you so much for the sub uh it has been 22 great uh great months of having you here so thank you so much for your continued support but that is it for my spiel so hey rj who you playing today hey everybody i'm rj today i'll be playing kaelin the shadow kai wizard cl wizard cleric wow uh shadow kai wizard and we're both he him hi i'm lb hack i'm up by playing gwen the halfling barbarian fighter we're both she her and i just want to say that one of my characters in my game last night called uh water deep waterford and now i can't it doesn't sound right either way so oi i'm cyber I use he or any pronouns. I play Arjon. He is Illyrian, Draconian, Dragonborn, Ranger, Cleric, who also uses he, him. Hey, everybody. I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener. She, her. I'm playing as Coriander, the Elegant Paladin. She, him, they, any. And I am the indoor adventurer, he, him, and tonight I shall be your dungeon master. So, last time we left off. 
your group ha was going through the rubble of the city of Vascor after a incident, one might say, that caused the floating city to fall onto the lower city, uh, you began to uh, go through and actually... Uh, clear out some space as you were uh, attempting to clear this space out you ended up meeting with an artificer named ozzy uh who informed you arjan that uh there was a key that was going to be used uh to turn on a warforged colossus codenamed slayer uh that was going to be used in a time of great need having uh, then reconvened with Gwen, the two of you made off to attempt to locate this key where you ended up making a deal with a demon named Asherik, uh, who for a, a measly sum, uh, a paltry sum of gold was able to trade you a key. Uh, that would once again activate this giant warforged beast. Uh, it was then that Arjan called forth Bridget, a Abashai engineer uh, that would, with Ozzy's help, begin looking over this warforged cleric. Uh, Corey began the lugubrious process of trying to figure out how she could keep a secret and also uh, take some of the power from Shar, the goddess of secrets, uh, while staying in a well-lit area. Uh, and Calum began to research more uh, into... Uh, more into kind of everything going on all at once uh primarily the spell uh that he was having a difficult time grasping this soul severance uh that was found in corvain nightfeather's notes it was at that point that it was revealed that calum wished to perform this soul severance upon himself the rest of the group decided historically that has been a bad idea if he is attempting to do this alone, so you attempted to try and dissuade him from this. Uh, as uh, you all had a meeting about what to do, Corey eventually was going to go off and discuss uh, this situation with Calum, while Gwen thinking, well, if everybody else is going to be talking to their gods about these things, I am going to attempt to speak to the Tempest uh, and figure out what all of this is then. Uh, so Gwen, you had gone out onto, uh, out into a field, played the flute for, uh, for Talos in an attempt to kind of gain, uh, gain his look your way. Uh, it was then that you felt the calling towards an outcropping near the sea, uh, where you saw a shrine covered in other religious iconography, but figured, well, you recognize Talos's uh, symbols on there, so clearly this was meant for him, and you put some money inside of what had looked like a washed-out bowl that was filled with other uh, coins and goodies. And where we are going to pick up this week, Gwen, you have just tossed some coinage into the uh, into this bowl, and the sea level around you is beginning to rise with a quickness after you had rolled a three on a religion check. And the clouds above uh, boy, you are getting I'd like to darker. get out of there. Yeah, you certainly can. Um, <laughs> ah! So Gwen, seeing this, you don't know what the tide tables are like around here, but historically, again, this has not seemed uh, like a good place to be. Uh, near the no, ocean no. when the tide is coming in. Uh, no, so you are at the base of a uh, kind of a rocky cliff. Uh, and I am guessing that you are just either like scrabbling up the side uh, or like just trying to get back to the uh, to the path that had actually led you down to this place. Yeah, Gwen is full on just rock climbing up this base. Okay, make an athletics check for me. 19. 19? Okay, not bad. Uh, so yeah, Gwen, as you are, like, with a quickness climbing up this rock face, um, you can hear what sounds like a voice in the waves. In the waves? In the waves themselves. Not from beneath, but it seems like the crashing and curling of these waves is almost like a... It comes off as almost like uh, a conversational tone. Uh, is the water still rising? It is. 
and is currently like washed up onto the shore beneath you, but it does not look like it is going past that point. Okay. Uh, Gwen's going to kind of turn back and try and look and see if she can see who's talking. Okay. Uh, as you are looking down um, and holding on to the side of this <laughs> cliff face, which I imagine like you are just like fingies with your incredible strength, like directly into the rock face. Like you don't need handholds. You're making them yourself as you climb up on this thing. Mm -hmm. Um as you look down, from what you can see, it looks like the almost like the briny top layer of the sea in this foam seems to be making out the outline of a feminine face. Make a religion check again. Oh, God. <laughs> Why? The one time I tried a six. A six? Um, you've heard stories of things like this, but you just can't for the life of you put your finger on what this might be. Uh, okay. Gwen is going to yell over the tide. Look, unless you're Talos. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was for him. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go. <laughs> and... <laughs> Yeah, as you continue to do that, the conversational tone that this voice has kind of tapers off and then definitely seems to take on more of a snide tone. But it seems um, far enough I... away that you can't hear it over the crashing of the waves. Elvie is so curious. Um, but Elvie doesn't want Gwen to die. Uh, yeah, uh, Gwen, Gwen's, <laughs> fine, fine, all right, you know what, fine. <laughs> Starts climbing back down. What, what? <laughs> and as you are saying this and climb back down, make another athletics check. Okay. 15, Jesus. 15? Not rolling okay. well. Still good. Uh, as you are getting back down closer to the waves, um, the voice that you can hear, distant, beyond the crashing of these waves, you can begin to make out faintly, and you hear the voice of a woman. Uh, and this woman says, you have never paid. Never paid what? For safe travels. Why don't you pay? I'm sorry, I'm con where am I where am I going? Well, you've traveled to the islands. You've traveled to your homes. You've traveled on my waters to coves. To inlets. To bays. And never once have you paid. Paid you? Because I've paid to go across the sea. And the waves like, crash below, and they seem to, like, reach up even higher, and you can feel, even though you are maybe about, like, 20 feet, 25 uh -huh. feet up, you can feel that ocean spray kind of lapping at the back of your legs as it falls down. Wow, I, well, I, I didn't know I had to pay the ocean? Is the, are you the ocean? And you hear a bubbling laughter coming from the sea at this. Okay, well, next time I will pay to cross the water. And the response that you hear is, you can either pay with gold, and for that you will always be paying me. Uh -huh. But there is another way. Look, I'm already taken. Like, I've kind of committed myself to one person. So if it's, like, that route, I can't really take it. 
And again, you kind of hear the laughing of the waves. And it says, or the voice that you hear anyway says, How long can you hold your breath? I I tend to avoid water, so I don't want to find out. And as you say this, <laughs> the currents lap up again. And this time, it is more than just a little mist. The ocean is continuing to rise up, and you can feel water against the back of your legs. Hey, whoa, whoa, I shall climb up a little bit higher. I said I would pay. What do you what? Look, I, I learned to swim like, I mean, I, it was a while ago, but I don't do it well. And I don't, I, you're, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure the water's great, but I'm not like a huge fan of being underwater. So if you could just tell me what you want. And Gwen, when you say, I'm not a huge fan of being underwater, <laughs> you hear that laugh again and abruptly, and it says you will be. And you see a huge wave of water jut up along the ocean side, and it will attempt to soak you and pull you back down, make a strength saving throw. Oh, God in heaven. 22. 22? Okay, you are drenched in seawater. But you can see that, like, these waves are now almost coming up at you like a cat's paw trying to drag something down. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Gwen's going to try and climb out. Okay, yeah, make a athletics check. Oh, God. 22. 22, okay, with a quickness, just nope. Nope, 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 <laughs> no, nope. No, 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 no. And so you rise to the top, and as you are escaping... From this voice, you hear it say, you will pay again. They always do. And when you reach up to the top and look down, the ocean levels are exactly at the same level that they were before you climbed. They are resting peacefully at the base where you can still see the, like outcropping of rocks that has this mm -hmm. shrine on it um but there are while everything looks relatively dry against the ocean wall there are still the markings of what look like waves that have come up and drenched them uh now that gwen is up in a space that she is not about to drown she's going to start yelling down <laughs> hey look bitch I'm gonna pay next time, but not because you told me to. Like that. But I didn't I didn't know. The fuck <laughs> and this is Gwen the as, Talos? What the fuck? As you are saying this, you hear a rumbling of thunder far off in the distance. That sounds pleased. Good. Uh, yeah, Gwen is going to just, like, run back. She's like, you know what? I'm just gonna run. We're just gonna jog. I'm gonna do a quick jog. I'm gonna back. go as far inland as possible and not yeah, deal yeah, yeah. with the ocean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seems smart. Seems good. Mm -hmm. Checks off. Uh, I'm gonna try and find my cleric friends to tell me what the fuck just happened. Yeah, that checks. Um, as you were making your way back to town, uh, Corey, you wanted to have a conversation with Caleb? Uh, I think yep. we had one already, though, last episode. I think so. Um, did we, like, <clears throat> retire, or did we just do that thing where the elves, like, sit on the roof somewhere and, like, wait for morning to come? Pretty sure it was that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I, I think that throughout the night, uh, there's kind of a, a nervous energy from Corey. Um, and she eventually um, just kind of like turns and looks at Calum and it's obvious she wants to say something. There's the blank expression of the owl mask as he turns her head to her. I don't think it's a good idea. Hmm. 
When has it ever been a good idea? I... Do you remember? <laughs> Do you remember when my winter season was acting up? Right. At the time, I would have given anything to be rid of it. And now, after all of this time, it's gone forever. And I will probably never get it back. Losing parts of yourself doesn't make you feel any less broken. Even if I'm what I'm losing is the broken parts. That's the problem. With the Raven Queen, we can draw a a very clear line between what's going to be divided. I don't think we can do that with you, Calum. And I wish I had the words to tell you that I don't think you need to be fixed. He's gonna remain silent as he turns his head back. Obviously it's always going to be your decision, but I've said my piece. This process that's going to happen when we cast this spell, obviously, well, to me, might not seem all that bad. There were stories of others who accomplished the soul severance. They turned out just fine. We need to test it anyway. And I don't feel comfortable testing it on any of you. Is there a way to reverse it if something goes wrong? If there was, it probably burnt up with the rest of Corvain's notes. I just have a bad feeling about it. There's Again, no, there's no part of you that I'd want to be rid of. He leaned back. First you, and then, well, first Arjan, now you. You're going to make me doubt myself in this one. In any other circumstance, that would be something I'd want to avoid. Maybe there's another way to test this out. Perhaps. I can draw up some precautions just in th case things go sideways. All right. I want you to know that things get better over time. You haven't given yourself a chance to heal.
That's the thing, Corey. We don't have time. So if this works or not, I can find something to keep me going. Caelan, we're elves. Having all the time in the world is our best quality. It feels like, though, as elves, we have all the time in the world and also none of it, considering the situation we're in. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. We'll figure it out. We always do. Kalen's gonna stand and nod his head to Corey as he steps mm -hmm. off the roof and casts Featherfall on himself. Okay. And I would say it's around that time, Calum, as you are kind of coming back uh, down to the ground that you just see Gwen, like, running, just still sprinting away uh, into the town, it looks like, and just sort of, like, looking around for somebody that she knows. And then, Gwen, you spot Calum. And likewise, Corey up on the roof. Guys, hey, I have a question. Uh, uh, who, who, uh, who is the Sia person? Religion check. Yeah, make a religion check. <laughs> or Arcana, depending on which one's higher. Uh, they're both the same. Twenty-three. Okay. Um. Yeah, so a 23, uh, Calum, you know that the C is not a person. Uh, however, as far as uh, religion checks go, there is really one deity of the C itself uh, that is not exactly a shared pantheon um, or shared portfolio. And the goddess who occupies said C uh is not typically a nice one yeah the sea itself isn't a person per se the deity governing the portfolio of the sea though i believe they call her a bitch in some places okay if that's who i just fucking talked to then yes she is a bitch you talked to umberly i don't know i talked to something that was the water she wanted me, she was upset that I didn't pay to cross the ocean. And I was like, well, I didn't know. Also, I don't have that much money. And then she was like, well, you will pay. And then she asked me how long I could fucking hold my breath and try to get me underwater, but I climbed out of there. And Corey, you can hear all of this as well. You're yeah. just on the roof up above. The block can hear all of um, She'll climb down. Thought you didn't want to mess with gods. I didn't. I was trying to talk to the Tempest. Can I make? I mean, I want to talk to my god. Can I make a religion check on practical, like rituals in a Tempestian prayer? <laughs> sure. Roll a roll a religion check. Maybe we should have tried the lightning bolt. Twelve. Twelve. Ah. Uh... Mm. Yeah, Just a general that's, um, knowledge of things. Learning about uh learning about Talos, you have not really uh learned a whole lot about them. Um you know that uh typically spaces where the worship of Talos is prevalent, there is also worship for Umberly. Uh, it seems like people not wanting to get their ship destroyed from uh, stormy weather is often a good call uh, as far as seafaring folk are, are considered. I thought your god was territorial. Well, I mean, yeah, that's why I was praying to him. And then I guess, I don't know, something kind of like pulled me down and I thought it was a shrine to 
to the Tempest and it was, uh, I don't know, I put some coins in it and then that fucking bitch started talking to me. Hmm. Umberly is a deity of the sea while Talos is a deity of the storms. It, they kind of yeah. go hand in hand when prayer of the nautical nature comes around. Calum, you would oh. also know that Talos, Umberly, uh, and in the northern climates, uh, one of the uh, one of the more ill-fated uh, snow uh, portfolio goddesses are usually attributed there, uh, either Aesthetia or Oral, depending on who you ask. Uh, but these gods are known as the gods of ire. Relaying that information. Yeah, as a collective, the three of them are known as this. Oh, so, like, some wires got crossed or something? Maybe. Um, if it's a shared shrine, and... It's kind of like my message spell. Percentage chance of it going to somewhere else might have gotten your wires crossed. Hmm. Fuck! Okay, well, we're not going on the ocean anytime soon, right? Hopefully not. not. I know of. Solid probably should avoid that she seemed pretty uh interested in getting me there under the water hmm mm -hmm. Mm. yeah see do we this do is we why i like talos okay not yeah. fucking with anything cool do so let's shelve this angry goddess and focus on something else do along with yes. the other angry goddesses that we've shelved well, before we shelve it, um, do we still have that cloak that allows people to breathe underwater? That would be on Gwen. <laughs> the manta ray I... cloak. Yeah. This cloak? I would recommend holding on to that. Yeah. All right, shelved. What's next? Or, or, should I go talk to her because I can? No. Okay. I would recommend against it. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't fight a god. We as, don't want to fight gods. Look at us as living examples as to why not talk to deity. DD sometimes right. go bad. Right. But Arjan's is great. So far. So far. Yeah. Not as good as mine, but still good. Try to stay are... on good terms with your first deity. Y'all are forgetting like a whole like arc where TMO is being very mean to Arjan. <laughs> she was me. She had us at the start. Had us in the first half, not gonna lie. <laughs> to be fair, it was the blue head that was being the jerk. Um, are we gonna be here for a little while? Uh, we're gonna be here until Olivia gets here to catch us up on what's happening on the moon, which is about... Oh, right nine ten days okay um well i got i've got a few things that i want to do um i'm do you guys know where arjan is probably resting somewhere uh arjan well, was he... last seen communicating with tiamat right <laughs> well he did leave him in that grove is it is it night or morning? Uh, it is nightfall at this point. Morning See. is oh. in probably maybe like... It's winter, so sun would probably rise in maybe like six hours, seven hours. It's probably close to midnight at this point. Okay. Well, where are we sleeping tonight? Calum's mysterious Turn. cabin. Oh, right. right. Calum's curious cabin. Right. Uh, can someone give me, like, a hundred gold? Sure. Why? You said sure before you asked, so... No questions asked, a hundred gold. <laughs> Autumn form. She doesn't care. <laughs> you guys forget, Autumn form is her generosity. Yeah, that's why we asked. Alright, oh. cool. Oh, wait, I only have fourteen. I'm gonna have to ask Shit. Ajahn. I, I have money. I hand How much? a hundred gold. Solid. Uh, Autumn form, I have no money. 
Um, yeah. Uh, Gwen is going to go into... Um, Gwen is going to go to sleep, but get up early. Okay. Um, uh, probably going to go find <clears throat> Arjan, actually. Yeah. Uh, and Gwen will say that when you find Arjan, Arjan, um, you got done communing with Tiamat probably like an hour ago. Did you just go right to sleep at that point? I'm probably just like, uh, do writing down like some ideas for like, oh, how can we get around this, uh, this thing? So there's probably like scraps of paper, um, in like stacks on the bed before me, but I'm just like sitting cross-legged on the bed. Hey. We don't have any plans the next couple of days, right? Uh, until Olivia gets hit, no, I don't believe that we do. I think Bridget is going to be working on the uh, Slayer. And I believe we are all going to be researching uh, ways around Calum's right. idea. Right. Uh, by the way, uh, tried to talk to Talos. Uh, uh, something got crossed. Uh, instead, talked to I think they said the bitch queen, and uh, she wanted me to go under the water, and I didn't want to go, and I left. And she said that I didn't pay, and yeah, so. Do I know bitch queen? Make a religion check. Ooh, oh, okay. It's the first time that I'm rolling the new Sanguine dice set from D and D Beyond, and it's squished. Oh, oh god, oh. it squished That's when I rolled oh, it. No. Not the sound effect I want from that. I rolled no, a two. You. Okay, a two. Um, you've heard the name. You know that it's associated with the sea. It's not a very nice name, so it's probably not a very nice deity to be fair tiamat was also called the tyrant queen uh so you know maybe it's a misnomer but at the same time uh gwen does not seem to be discussing it as if it was such that's fun yeah so avoiding water maybe i don't know i'm not that scared of her but we'll you know Maybe if she's the go goddess of the ocean, that she might be able to do <sighs> terrible, terrible things with the wildlife there. And I've already died to sharks before. That's what I'm thinking. Like, you know, avoid it at all costs. Okay. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go to bed. I got some things to do tomorrow. Um, I might need to borrow some gold. Not sure yet. For what? Stuff and things, my dude. What kind of stuff and things? I need to buy supplies. What kind of supplies? Um, I don't want to tell you. How much do you need? I don't know yet. I have a hundred gold. That probably will cover everything. But I just, you know, that's that's all I got. So. Okay solid okay cool uh we're, i'm gonna go to bed so you gonna come with us or what are you doing you came into the room where he was planning on sleeping <laughs> i i'm i'm sitting on the bed right now oh okay sorry uh then uh, i'll see you in the morning probably not okay Gwen is going to go to bed. Okay. So Gwen going to bed. Arjan going to bed after he does uh, some more paperwork stuff. The elves also going he, to bed, I'm assuming. Salem pops back into the mansion real quick and asks one of the unseen servants to roll out a chalkboard to have a list of remaining time the mansion's going to be here and a list of how many meals are left inside the kitchen. Yeah. 
They will do so. Um, you cast it in the middle of the day, so you're probably still at like 15 hours left on the mansion because it lasts for 24, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and as far as meals go, um, you start off with what, like a thousand rations? 900, because it's nine full course meals. Nine full course meals. Uh, okay, so you have 900. You're probably sitting at like 700 Perfect. ish rations left. Uh, he's going to retire to one of the rooms in the cabin and meditate. Okay. So meditating, and then, uh, Cyber, you had said that Arjun was going to be doing something? I am trying to figure out how to commune with the Raven Queen. Okay, uh, make a religion check. I don't like this die. Just mute it. Mute the tab. It doesn't roll well either. Oh, six. Okay. Six. Gotcha. Um, I mean, you don't have any new ideas on how to... <laughs> Grossly, by meat dice is not a way to describe this. Uh, you have you don't have any new ideas uh, necessarily on how to get in uh, contact with the Raven Queen, but from what you've seen, um, she showed up when you were performing a ceremony on a body. Um, she showed uh, and had a communication with Corey. Maybe you find somebody else who died and like send her uh that would be a method you also know that another uh not really means but uh another instance where the raven queen showed up was when uh tangentially when cory and calum would meditate with each other and then a raven would appear to steal a gemery none of these have are exactly what you're looking for, but these are instances where her presence has been noted. I'm really not going to be able to talk to her unless I die. Mm. Set that aside for now. Go to bed. Okay. So, going into the next day, um... Unless there is anything that y'all specifically want to do before Olivier appearing, we can start fast playing some time. Um, some downtime, even. Uh, I know, it's the craziest thing. That can only bear good news. Uh, so for this the next day, is there anything that anyone wanted to do specifically? Gwen go shopping. Okay. Shopping is difficult because most of the stores have been crushed or destroyed, but uh, you can still attempt to shop around. Um, okay. So for shopping around, roll an investigation check. Investigation! Minus one. 17! Hey. 17? Um, yeah, you are able to find everything uh, that you had messaged me that you were looking to shop for, uh, in which case, um, depending on the the last three things are really depending on how much Gwen is willing to spend on them. Uh, starting value is 50 and they can go upwards of 500, but at the like price of art things, so like 50, right, right, right. 150, 255. Uh, I I think Gwen will get the 50 gold ones, so she's going to go to Arjan. Uh, Arjan, Gwen is going to come up to you at some point during the day. How much do you need? Uh, 150. Okay. From the party funds, please. Okay. Thank you. And she scurries away. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then everything else on the list, uh, you're looking at maybe like 25 gold. Cool. Still net positive. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, then I will remove 75. Or I will remove 25. All right. Then nothing else for me today. Okay. Sounds good. And then, um, so, Calum, anything that you want to be doing specifically during this downtime? Is going to ask a few mages for a few spells. Okay. Uh, most notably, <clears throat> dispel magic. Um, he has contingency. Uh, I think it's just dispel magic, actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say among among the mages that are here, uh, as well as having access to an arc mage, uh, who's amenable to your group dispel magic is an easy one for you to pick up uh you'd have to spend some time at the mages college uh in order to do this transfer uh and by the time that you're done transferring it into your spell book um the uh Skoviskin, the uh grand archivist will actually ask uh if you would mind helping him uh looking through the stacks of books as you had asked him initially uh, to track down notes and letters relating to Corvain. Uh, he'll nod his head. <clears throat> okay. So I'll spend the... Sounds good. And then for Corey, are you just continuously uh, trying to figure out how best to, to outsmart the Goddess of Secrets? Yeah, I think so. Okay. She's doing a lot of introspection uh, and, yeah, just trying to figure that out. All right, sounds good. And then Arjan, uh, are you just helping Bridget and Ozzy out, or are you doing anything as well? Uh, my attention is going to be divided between that and uh, that uh, trying to help out in any way with uh, what Kalem is doing. Um, and trying to uh, continue trying to research uh, uh, communion with the Raven Queen. Okay. Um, so while you are helping out in the, uh, in the Anatheum, in this massive library, roll a investigation check. Could I also cast Flock of Familiars to help us out? Yeah, I'd say. It's concentration up to an hour. Yeah. Three. I'm, I'm changing the dice. I'm they, changing the dice. These meat dice are not working well. Um, don't forget about uh, your blood die as well. Uh, I'm trying to. Like this. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah, looking around today anyways, you're not really finding a whole lot, but this is also a massive library, and you do not know where to start. Uh, so you're just kind of like more getting a good uh, groundwork as to where to go on this one. Natural 20 on the blood die. Hell, Hell yeah, yeah, my friend. I swapped to the Memento Mori from pre-ordering Ravenloft on D&D Beyond. And it worked without a hitch. Uh, so yeah, looking... I would say that for this, if you wanted to, you could use your nat 20 for the investigation while looking around. Okay. Yeah. Um... So looking around, you know that getting in contact with the Raven Queen is both easy and also it is both easy and difficult in the sense where an easy way, as you had suggested earlier, uh, is to meet the end of a mortal coil. Uh, however, the difficulty in that aspect lies is that if your soul has already been designated to go somewhere else, if you owe your fealty to another deity, chances are you will just go there de facto. Most individuals only meet the Raven Queen if they are a Shadar Kai, or if they have not yet claimed uh, or like claimed an afterlife for themselves or been sorted yet. Uh, typically, that is more attributed to Kelimvor uh, to kind of figure out the sorting situation. However, the Raven Queen also attributes some of this as well. Uh, primarily for individuals, again, that are Shatterkai, but mostly on the elven spectrum of things. If you wish to get a hold of her, uh, there is a suggestion of either going to uh, going to the chasm, 
located in Fildos near the Rookery of Bone, or uh, you can try and replicate a kind of religious ceremony that involves you bathing in blood. Yeah. So. Okay. I uh don't think I'm gonna be able to get in contact with the Raven Queen easily. Yeah, the whole dying part puts a dampener on the uh communications end. Well I mean that would I've done it before. We have enough diamonds. But Tiamat already claimed me. I could try modifying my contact other plane spell. Bring you along with me. What are the risks? We both go temporarily insane for a bit. of contacting other planes I might want to contact my father he might have some insight on these sort of things not Lionar Farron my actual dad yeah yeah I understand I could yeah. visit him Contact other planes only lasts for about a minute, so getting an answer out of the Raven Queen might not actually fall in that time frame. Uh, that's true. Okay. I'll probably talk to him a bit near the end of our stay here, considering I don't have the teleportation uh, runes for here. I'd have to meet up with you guys back at the house. Oh, uh, you... I would have to cast Plane Shift if I wanted to do an extended visit and do some good questioning. <sighs> okay. I mean, that sounds very risky. But. Also, um, I've been thinking about this whole soul severance thing. It might not be the most ethical thing, but we could potentially use it on a simulacrum and see what happens. Are there any, is there any research on, uh, in those notes about severing the soul of something that has none? Like I told Corey, if there were anything extended in those notes, it probably burnt up with the rest of them. I mean, you can try it. You can try it. A casting, casting something like this, how much of a drain is that on you? <clears throat> I won't know until I get to see the actual specifics of the spell itself, but when I was casting from Corvain's spell books, those higher level spells did a number on me. The wish spell itself, well, I hurt Mistra trying to do that. Do you feel like, uh, uh, do you feel like doing this 
would have similar effects. Possibly. I have a lot of people I need to talk to. Get all the information you can before you try it. I'm, I'm really afraid of doing this more than once. I'm going to take a look around town and see if anyone has some sort of ring of spell storing. If things do go sideways, I can have a force dome prepped inside of it and give it to one of y'all. Okay. I like that contingency. I can also have a contingency placed on myself if things go sideways. Uh, I'd have to take a look at the spells I have, but there's definitely something in there that'll st that can stop me. Another wall of force cast on myself or a resilient sphere. We have way too much free time, Arjan. Usually we have none at all, and it's just go, go, go. I'm getting kind of anxious, actually. I understand. I. I would still prefer us to try and use all the time that we have rather than trying to do something quickly. Right. Eight days, huh? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing that we have to do at the end of these eight days. We have more time. At Just least... I at least until uh, Caius rears his head again. The last I checked in with Amaris, she was fine. I don't know what's going to happen the next time I check in on her. It's this weird balance. Everything inside of me is telling me to charge headlong right into the shadow fell. And another part is I'm scared that a lot of things are going to go wrong there and I'm just going to fail again. Would you be able to contact Mars? I can certainly try. If it's causing you anxiety. Wouldn't it be better to know? What if she doesn't pick up? now during his break he's going to try and contact Amaris yeah uh, roll your d100 100 17 17 goes sideways I think I believe it's a 10% oh okay so, yeah. still so close you feel like the like you're at like one bar, but you still got it. 
Honey, hello? It's switched to 4G. Look. Um, Amaris, it's Calum. Checking in on you. We're doing some research. It might help. Hang on. Be there soon. And the response that you get is... I'll be strong. I believe in you. I know you'll come for me. He'll turn to Arjun and nod his head. Well, we know. Oh, what if there's the time dilation, just like in the Feywild, where like a day here is like a year there, and we're just stop, Ooh. stop, stop. Do Do you still breathe? I like to. I try doing that. That's making me anxious. <laughs> We have time. We have time. Cam will continue his research. Okay. And then towards the end of the day, uh, I'm assuming Gwen is going to be rounding everybody up. Is this the second day? It is, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, Gwen is going to attempt to gather everyone. We've been staying at an inn? Uh, not really. Like, Caleb has summoned his curious cabin for y'all to stay at. Otherwise, it uh. is more just if you have found a building that is still standing ish, you can stay there. Okay. No one's going to charge yeah. you rent for it. Right. Uh, I think Gwen is going to pull up. Uh, yeah, Gwen is going to pull everyone up to a uh, an abandoned building that still has a door on it. All right, is everyone here? How's everyone feeling? Sharp intake of breath before a slow exhale. Ooh, he's breathing. Yeah. Um, it's either a, a very good ins- sign or a very bad sign. Right. Uh, well, I just wanted to because we've had a rough couple of... We've had a rough year. Um, well, uh, and she just kind of, like, gets a little awkward that just, like, motions to the door for someone to go in. <laughs> Arshan will go up and just like side eye Gwen, just like what the fuck is this, and open the door. Um, inside, it is a well lit large room. There are tables and chairs set up, and uh, across the ceiling are streamers and ribbons, and then across the table are little paper triangles that have been cut out and taped. Not taped. So, uh, uh, there's no such thing as tape. Uh, chain like, link. uh, t- yeah, chain link together across the side. Uh, there's, uh, ale and a bunch of different kinds of food. Um, and there is a sign in the background that says, Happy birthday, Caleb and Arjan. And then in parentheses, it says, Probably Corey. <laughs> oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. It's. Ooh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Happy birthday. Surprise! Birthday. That's, that's the one. Arjan is going to sharply inhale, go into panic mode, and start, ah. like, ah. going around the room looking under the table for a mechanical cat. <laughs> what? What? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to panic you. It's just, it's been, it's... He's gonna it's... jump, he's gonna pop up from under the table. Last time... We did this. You let that thing I... into my house. 
I what? We're not there. We're not there. Arjan, come back to us. What? Arjan, hey, hey, hey. We're not there. The cat isn't here. We're in a completely different city, okay? Breathe, buddy. You didn't Breathe. make any deals for this. I didn't know. I know I just paid money. That's why I needed money. Okay. All right. I just... You guys told me a while back that you didn't have birthdays, and then we celebrated your birthday, and that was last year, so happy birthday. Woo. Sorry. All right. It's okay. Just why don't you sit down? There's some ale. Um, and and I got you all a gift. All right, well, I got you all individually gifts. I got gifts it for you as individuals. Uh, <laughs> she goes into her pocket and she pulls out um, a... Uh, <laughs> they're, they're kind of tangled together, but once she like untangles them, she pulls out a, um, a golden chain um, and hands it to Corey. And on the end of it is a... Uh, just a golden little golden leaf i didn't know with the time difference if your birthday had passed or not already so oh I, as far as i know people only get born once yeah yep thanks <laughs> uh here uh she hands a thicker like almost like chained uh, bracelet to Arjan that's uh, silver. Yeah. yeah, it should be big enough. For, I just kind of did like my wrist plus another wrist. And uh, here, and she gives Calum a bracelet that's fairly delicate. It is uh, a gold chain and a silver chain sort of intertwined together uh, that clasp. Uh, in sort of like one of those circle and uh, lock endings. Huh? Thanks. You're welcome. I thought we could maybe use a night to just hang out and relax and party and play games. There's food. Cool. Glenn just starts drinking ale. She sits down. She's like, it's very confused about what's going on in this moment. Uh, Arjun's trying to get over uh, where you sent him back to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he he's just like uh, very slowly like sip, sipping on uh, whatever drink is in front of him. I have a uh, dragon's dice and a deck of cards. If anybody wants to play sure. poker. <laughs> Let me show. Corey? I'll give it a go. Caleb, you want in? We can use uh, pretzels as payment. What's a pretzel? It's a it's those things over there. It's like dough that's been uh, rolled into a, like a little pattern with a little like crossy I, bit I in the middle. I know what pretzel is. I was oh. yanking your chain. Oh, good because I don't actually know how they're cooked, but I could have. I probably could have figured it. I could have guessed and sounded confident. They're actually. Wait, no, bagels are boiled. No, yeah. pretzels could be boiled too. Pre pretzels are boiled as well. Sorry, my father went on a baking kick for a while. Cool. Well, are you feeling lucky, guys? No. Never. All right. <laughs> Starts handing out cards. And 
throughout this awkward silence as you begin to start passing out cards thinking to yourself this may be the grimmest birthday that you have ever celebrated with any group of people but honestly with the keeps this is about as much as we can ask for at this point that is where we are going to go into our break for the evening we're going to try and be back in five to ten minutes so don't go into a place and listen to so grab a food grab a drink grab a friend or possibly go to indooradventure.redbubble.com pick yourself up something nice and we'll see you guys shortly all right everybody see you soon and we're back so you just Steven. gonna bring me a birthday gift on my birthday to my birthday party on my birthday with a birthday gift that is so fucking rude happy yeah. birthday <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh my god. Happy birthday. <laughs> so. That's one of my favorite vines. I don't know if you guys have seen that. I'll post it. Do it. Put it in questions for the courts. But hello, everybody. We have returned from our break. A birthday is being had in the only way the four keeps know how, which is very quietly and slightly on edge. But it's happening. Y'all are playing cards. Things are going pretty well for the evening. Was there anything that you guys wanted to do towards the end of the evening? Otherwise, we can just go into the next set of days. Good to go. Good to go, indeed. Uh, so, over the next set of days, you guys know that from here, you have roughly about eight days until Olivier shows up. Uh, at this point, uh, there is going to be some time that you have that is considered uh, as the kids would say downtime uh, that you can use for an assortment of activities uh, is there anything during this downtime that you would like to do specifically uh, Arjan I believe uh, are you going to just continue looking up ways to get in contact with the Raven Queen or are you going to be doing anything else during this time uh, yeah uh, I've, I've got my three things that I just want to keep working on okay uh I'm, yeah so regarding the plane shift thing uh cory can remove your madness i'm pretty sure she's got she's got abilities she's got tips and tricks she's got those mlg <laughs> pro strats uh so arjun arjun is worried about what would happen whenever uh we try to do that we only have one minute and caleb is also there and it's kind of being done through Kalem. So Arjan really doesn't have a way to actually like talk through that. So I I, I don't I don't think Arjan wants to go through the contact other planes route. But doesn't actually, like she'll uh, sometimes speak with the Raven Queen or at least receive visions from her. Not something something Skywatcher. I might be misremembering. I don't think she actually has ever talked to the Raven Queen. No, seeing the Raven yeah. Queen's face that you guys had apparate inside of the tent when she said the contract is done. Uh, that was the first time that Chua had ever like seen the Raven Queen. This was, uh, from Chua's standpoint, this was very much like we watched the clouds in order to receive like uh, any kind of uh, premonition or like we look to the stars, that sort of thing, and then those are our ancestors up above. Like it was very much a more like we pay our reverence to the goddess of death because sometimes she helps us out, but there is never a like ring ring, yo Raven Queen, what's up? It's your girl Chua. Like there was never a situation like that, uh, as far as Chua was concerned. Yeah, um, on this second day, uh, or not on the second day, probably closer to around, like, day three, day four, uh, Bridget and Ozzy finish running all of their diagnostics on the Slayer, uh, and they will let you know that, uh, they've actually, uh, adjusted some of its protocols now. Usually, uh, in times previous, uh, it was meant to power on, kill, like, destroy and smash uh as many big villainous mages as it possibly could if they were disrupting the town uh but seeing as how that has kind of fallen by the wayside at this point uh they have adjusted the protocols for it to be more of a uh large scale mover uh so upon powering it on it will do its darndest to clear away as much rubble from the town as it possibly can 
Um, so at least that is what they suggest that does have uh, offensive capabilities. But as far as their usability in the current situation, uh, Ozzy uh, does not feel like they're really necessary. But Bridget obviously does not want to get rid of them entirely in favor of just moving things. Uh, so together, again, they sort of keep the offensive abilities, but more focus it on shifting rubble trying to get that out of the way uh so arjan that's going to happen around uh it's been about four days since bridget's been here um but together uh her and ozzy were able to kind of get this thing going um as far as someone to control it uh ozzy says uh that he's geared it so that way he would be able to help function it uh it's still based on uh whoever sort of has to attune themselves to this key uh they will the colossus will then follow the commands of um so hopefully uh they will do their best to, to keep this key under wraps that nobody uh it, it, nobody knows that you really have this key to begin with um but they are able to get the warforged colossus up and running um so they are able to do this thing is there anything that you would like to add specifically I'll get back to you on that. Sounds good. Um, Gwen, what is your plan for the next set of days? You know that you still roughly have around like eight days or so until Olivier shows up. So is there any like major plan that you wanted to do? Uh, Gwen is going to make sure that Caleb is like doing research and asking people about this spell. Um, I feel like the, maybe the first day Gwen like went and tried to talk to someone about it and had like she couldn't relay the information well enough for it to make any sense to anyone. Uh, so I think she will just uh, kind of hover around Calum <laughs> and uh, see if she can get any more information on this spell and and all that. Yeah, make a make a perception check or an Arcana check. Oh, I'm much better at Arcana. 16 for Perception. <laughs> okay. Uh, so 16 with Perception. Uh, you know that Calum has uh, kind of deferred this spell over to uh, the Archmage, uh, Alindra, mm -hmm. who has for the last set of days been poring over these notes, uh, trying okay. to figure out what this means to decipher it as best as she can. Um I imagine that like she's working at a desk and Gwen sort of approaches and like, hey, yeah, what's all this then? Um, yeah. And Alindra uh, explain she is uh, explains that she's fascinated by this. That uh, very rarely uh, do does any wizard, uh, let alone any archmage, get to look at the uh stylings of spells that another archmage performed or some powerful sorcerer mm -hmm. uh she's not entirely sure uh what corvain was uh but mm -hmm. based on these notes she knows that he was a powerful spellcaster she herself is not a wizard uh and that is something that you gwen find out uh she is a sorcerer uh, but that does not stop her from having the ability to understand these kind of this magical know-how. Mm -hmm. um, she is, uh, you can see that like she has pages upon pages on one side, more pages on the other. There is a quill that's sort of writing things down and she seems to be like delineating some of the mm -hmm. writings to the other side to kind of make a... Uh, not necessarily like a um uh rosetta stone kind of thing but like yeah yeah she, you can tell that she is using a comprehend language to understand the process that is written here so that way she can shift it over to more of like a layman's terms 
okay. if it helps her any, Kaylin would have given her a copy of the Language of the Lost, a primer that he wrote. Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, it does speed up, but now she is cross-referencing. Uh, so she uh, she's still having a lot of fun with this, all things considered. I uh, like. The state of the town aside, she seems in good spirits uh, because you have presented her a challenge and she enjoys this. Um, by the end of the... I want to say, like, by the end of the eighth day, uh, she will be done translating these notes. Um, however, Calum, you had also said that you wanted to look for a ring of spell storing. Uh, at some point, make an investigation check to try and track down a magical item such as this. I got a 13. So a 13. So as you were looking around and asking individuals like, hey, do you know of anybody who is currently selling X thing? Uh, it doesn't seem like there are. It doesn't seem like there are very many individuals that are currently selling magic items, uh, all things considered. Uh, but you do end up finding your way to Jinsai Alley, uh, the same place where Arjan and Gwen had previously uh, done a deal of sorts in order to get a key from a rather specific demon uh at the end of this alleyway uh where previously it was just sort of like an open area with this demon sitting atop a pile of gold you can see that there is a building there now that says jinsai bank and going inside of it you can see that it's set up like a bet like a teller um but it is more of a magic item knickknack shop. But they will pose that um, they don't take things in payments. It all has to be one lump sum. And it always has to be paid in gold. Uh, if there is a store attendant, he'll ask. Uh, Hi, I was wondering if you had a ring of spell storing in stock. Um, and the individual who kind of has more of like a, uh, like a craned neck and, uh, hands that they seem to clasp, uh, very tightly in front of themselves when you ask about, uh, this ring of spell storing, they will bring out a ledger and begin looking through, uh, and you can hear them muttering like ring of spells, ring of spells, ring of spells, ah, ring of spells storing. We do have one of one such thing in stock. Uh, are you interested in purchasing or making a deal? I thought that all deals here were made in a lump sum of gold. Mm. Uh, yes, they are. And you can see that, like, they have this, like, they have this look about them that says, well, not all deals. Uh, and, like, it's, it seems a little fishy. Uh, but, uh, they tell you that the list price for the Ring of Spell storing that they have would be 4,000 gold. 2k shy. Okay. Is there a process in which you can hold the item for me until I get back with the appropriate amount of gold? Uh, and they say that you have 24 hours. Thank you. 24 hour holds, nothing more, nothing less. Arjan! Arjan gives it. Cool. Yep. Back to Ginseng Al Ginsei Alley. Oop. Yeah. And by the time that you arrive, uh, they had asked for a name to put it under. Uh, but other than that, that seems fine with them. And then uh, when you arrive, you say it's for insert name uh which one would you have given them rj brain wanted to say see more butts but calum okay uh so yeah uh when you arrive hey i have this thing under the name for calum 
and they let you know 4,000 gold pieces and then there is a deal non-Faustian hopefully all things have a price uh yeah so uh you now have and now are now the proud owner of a ring of spell storing all right who wants to unattune to something <laughs> Why do we keep on asking this question? <sighs> can't be Gwen. Uh, yeah, I have like three different items. Uh, also, that you can't I cast spells have... when you rage, so. Right. Here's my issue. I have my arm five is an items. attunement item. And my ring is an attunement item. Dude. So, really, I only have one slot that I can play ball with. What is your arm? Uh, an arcane propulsion arm. Damn. Okay. Um, I can I can attune to it. Okay. So add a ring of spell slurring to your inventory. After I cast Wall of Force into it. And just to make sure the ring of spell storing. Up to fifth level, if I remember correctly. Yep, up to five levels. Sounds good. Wall of Force is fifth. Hell yeah. There is now a Wall of Force inside of your ring. Which, <clears throat> also, since you have that potion that lets you do, um, well, it supercharges your spells, I could cast a fifth level Guiding Bolt into this, and then you can just drink the potion yourself. Technically, I could uh, cast a fifth level guiding bolt myself. Huh. Oh, just sorry, fourth level. Um, it can only hold five levels. Yeah. <clears throat> just a thought for mm. if we don't need the wall force anymore. I actually only have the one potion for maximum power. Oh. You know, and if this process turns out fine, <clears throat> potentially I can cast a bunch of, uh, well, no, I could cast one counter spell into it and then two other spells at first level or a level two spell. Long tirade of combinations that he could do. You got days to consider it. You're fine. But we have that. But you do. Uh, Corey, is there anything that you wanted to do over the next period of days while you wait for Olivia to appear? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, she already got that package from her dad. Uh, so she's pretty well prepared, uh, as far as that goes. Otherwise, she's gonna kind of do the, uh, Gwen thing and, um, do some hovering. Uh, but she'll do, like, a wander hover, which is to say, like, she'll wander off and then she'll come back and, like, see if there's anything that she can contribute to any research, uh, and then wander off again. Yeah, uh, I feel like if you are doing wandering research, uh, the Grand Archivist will, uh, ask for your assistance in tracking down, uh, in tracking down book titles, uh, that he has been able to at least figure out the names of, uh, for potential leads describing the events uh regarding this spell um make an investigation check to see how useful Corey would be in actually looking through this library which technically she kind of has been in before uh 12 a 12 uh yeah you end up finding like it takes you a while uh but you do find a few of the books that are on this list um so on the seventh day, uh, so three days left, on the seventh day, uh, the Grand Archivist has put together a list of uh, six books uh, that he believes are uh, in relation to the events that you described being related to Corvain, uh, with a seventh kind of also being similar to it uh he was really looking for uh 
for books that that discussed the sundering as a whole uh and as not really finding much about Corvain uh, as a named individual, it would seem. Uh, but the books that he was able to find, and I will send a list in the chat as well, uh, The Sundering and Such Things by Jordan the Silent, The Sundering, A Primer by Denroot the Stern, Worlds Beyond by Groon, no last name, Birth of a Daughter by Celeste Primavar, talking about the origin of Mistra, the Strange and the Sound, a dissertation on planar travel by T. Grim Hordsbane, a dwarf. The Missing Years, a lack, a lack of discussion on the sky breaks by Jansen Ghost Tripper, uh, who, or Ghost Tipper, who is a halfling. And The Dragon Wars, a brief history of the warring nations and how initially there were 10 primary houses, five chromatics, and five metallic dragons. And then the last book that he is able to find uh, is a children's book. Uh, but it is the oldest children's book that he has in the library. It does not have an author attributed to it, but it, the title of the book is called A Home for Ravens. Uh, Calum picks up the book by Groon and turns to the Grand Archivist. This was his mentor. Perhaps uh, uh, this individual is known throughout the, well, I would say the researcher's community as a very bright and very talented uh, giant. Not many of the giants were willing to work with the small folk, let alone write books in our size. But it seems as though this one uh, had a fondness for us of sorts. Uh, if he was the mentor of uh, the individual that you claim, uh, perhaps there would be some writing in here as to relating between the two. Uh, uh, this was a uh, more hypothetical paper when it was initially released, uh, more talking about the idea of there being planes beyond our own, planes that many of us are understanding of, but uh, this put it in uh, easier terms to digest, besides uh, a plane of fire being made of fire, a plane of water being made of water. We all know that part, but uh, the interplanes, such as smoke or mud, those ones, the lesser knowns. Well, when the Raven Queen and Corvain tried to open up a rift to create a new homeland for their people, I distinctly remember they were trying to use a plane of positive energy. Something in there went sideways. Mm -hmm. And it became the Shadowfell after the Sundering. Uh, it wouldn't have been the entire plane of positive energy. It, uh, maybe perhaps an a aspect, subsection? An aspect of it. A uh, fringe, perhaps. But uh, if it had been the entire plane of positive energy, much more would have gone wrong at the time. The plane of positive energy is essentially an underlying plane. Uh, think of it as layers of the earth, uh, or layers of the plane, where you have your top layer, mid layer, bottom layer. Uh, positive and negative are large, they're massive, and they encompass more planes than just themselves, but they themselves are their own separate place. If that makes sense. No, no, I'm following. <clears throat> uh, Cam will sit down and begin reading through the books. Okay. Um, so, the Sundering and such things, and the Sundering, a primer, uh, are both talking about the events that you've already kind of been more aware of uh, being the events of the Sundering. Uh, kind of talking about how a nameless elven queen, uh, who was a very powerful magic caster, was responsible for this thing. 
she would later be known as the Raven Queen. But it seems like her identity was lost to time. Um, in the birth of a daughter, uh, with the or uh, talking about the origin of Mistra, uh, you know that there used to be. Mistra wasn't the first daughter of Shars. Uh, there was actually a daughter of hers that she had named Sharis, uh, and Sharis uh, sided with uh, Saloon in the battle between Shar and Saloon, uh, much to Shar's chagrin, and it was during that battle that Mistra was made, causing a more uh, definitive definitive look at the weave being able to identify a deity rather than just having the weave be a standard thing uh this then goes to also talk about the sundering but more of a after the events that happened they did not know if they if mistra would come back Many people abandoned their faith in Mistra at this point, as magic was nowhere to be found. But uh, those that stayed faithful to Mistra throughout seemed to be rewarded at the end of this, with through some means uh, of an uh, one way or the other. Um, the missing years, a uh, lack of discussion on the sky breaks. This is a. This is a look at how for several hundred years, uh, this halfling uh, notes that historians seemed that they did not want to discuss the events that happened at the Sundering, almost like talking about it would be a bad omen, like it could possibly bring it about again. So this brings up information about how sort of the hoops that other individuals would have when writing about this. Uh, it seems like in the events following the Sundering, uh, that is when you start seeing a lot more uh, historical writings on the dragons to the south uh, and their kingdoms, rather than focusing on the very obvious rifts in the sky uh, that were being made and then subsequently closed by the giants and the dragons. Uh, and in the Dragon Wars book, uh, you end up seeing several familiar names. Uh, you see Agravain of the Blightwood. You see uh, Arathsk, uh, but Arathsk the Bronze Baron. Girak, the Glistening Oasis for the Brass Dragon. Silver was Mirim, Guardian of the Peaks. Lareth, the Sun's Brilliance, was the Gold Dragon. And Shaluis, the Dire Hearted, was Copper. Uh, and you know that uh, Arathsk was, one of these dragons was Arathsk's partner uh, for a period of time, but then Tarlayan had a, uh, a, short, uh, a certain um, grudge, let's say. Uh, and you also see that uh, there is a name that you recognize that you did not know the full name of. Uh, under the green dragons for the gra uh, under the green dragon for the dragon war, you see a name Saul Ren T S A L L, -L apostrophe Ren, uh, whose name is given the looming mirror. Hmm. And kind of continuing to look through this, there is when you reach the children's book. It is titled A Home for Ravens. And looking at it, it is immediately familiar to you. But in a way that you don't yet know. And as you begin to read through it, this is a children's book about two ravens who live in a very large tree. And one of the ravens tells the other that they are going to want to make a nest for their babies. The rest of the creatures that live in the large tree hear that Mr. and Mrs. Raven are going to be having a child and begin to help the construction of the nest. One day, Mr. Raven returns and the tree and his nest are missing. He's distraught. Where could his tree have gone? Where is Mrs. Raven and their nest? 
Eventually, he finds his tree. His nest is there, but it is different. It is not the beautiful nest that it had once been. Mrs. Raven is not there, and the great owl, who had watched him grow, tells him that Mrs. Raven had left the tree to look for her husband, but not before leaving Mr. and Mrs. Raven's egg with the great owl for protection. Mr. Raven asks the great owl to watch over the egg for just a little longer while he goes to find Mrs. Raven. The story ends with Mr. Raven flying off into the darkness in search of his nest mate, leaving his one and only egg in the care of the great owl. I think by the end of all of this reading, Calum has tilted his mask up and he's rubbing his eyes. He's gonna pocket the home for ravens. Okay. Uh, anyone else in the library with him? Uh, your friends have been wandering about trying to help you or trying to help track down books, so unless yeah. specified otherwise, the rest of the keeps are here. This book, A Home for Ravens, parallels with the events of the Sundering and well, what Corvain was doing. Something's standing out to me, though, in that it says that Mrs. Raven, who I assume is going to be the Raven Queen in this, went off to look for her husband, leaving Amaris with Saloon, the Egg and the Owl. Uh-huh. But from what we know, the Raven Queen's been ruling over the Shadowfell. I don't think she's ever left. Children's story, we can't expect it to be entirely accurate. True. Maybe I'm just grasping at straws now for a lead. Is Saloon the owl one? It matches up with her iconography and how things are going. Right, is that why Amaris looks like an owl? That I don't know. In all senses, she should be a raven, just like her mother and father. But originally, Corvain wasn't Shatter Kai. He was a high elf. Can you just change like that? I don't know. Huh. I don't know how the gods work. It might have something to do with Saloon's influence. Okay. So, uh, she's actually, um, the Raven Queen's daughter. What is that? Does, does that change anything? No, that's something we already knew. Right. Um, why does she want Amaris? Why would you want your child? If they're your child. I guess so, but I mean, like, birds are pretty notorious for, like, fly free, little bird. Ravens themselves are a familiar unit. Familiar? Like, as in, like, a cohesive family. Oh. All right. So. I'm sorry. Did we learn something? More questions than learning, anyway. Um, at any rate. Well, now you know how I, I feel all the time. <laughs> Whoa, time out. In the children's story, the father raven left the egg with Saloon. Yeah. <laughs> so Corvain had known about Amaris? Possibly, and left her in the care of Saloon? Mars hadn't been born yet, had she? 
unknown. There's... So if he knew... So if he's the one who left Amaris with Saloon, he must have done it for a reason, right? He might have had contact with the Raven Queen beforehand. Right? Or... Uh, oh my god, wait. Nope. Okay, so... No, uh, no, no, say it. Well, I was just thinking that... Uh, if if your past life uh, had this child, left it with Saloon, there's a reason for that. Maybe they thought that the, maybe that Raven Queen had already got off the deep end at that point, and they were just trying to protect her. Right. Also, you're a dad. I've known this for some time, yes. Huh. I don't know how I feel about that one. I did my best. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not technically your, like, you know, sheep like motions. It's probably not technically yours. Like, you didn't really make her, but, like, your past life did. So, I mean, it's kind of like a stepchild. Adoptive. Sorry. Do we have any means to confirm any of our any of your theories? There's one, but it's off the table. How do you mean? Contact other planes is a bit of a crapshoot. Why? I can go insane using it. I can fix that. Do you go insane while you're there, or do you go insane when you come back? Uh, probably when I come back. I have yet to feel the effects. Hmm. What are the chances that, that occurs? Mental math calculation. About 15%. All I know is that we've done it once before, and it turned out fine. And we have a track record with uh, everything being fine, right? All I know is that the consequences of this particular decision are reversible. All right. I'm going to need some space. And a tub of water. Uh tub of water is easy enough to find. You are in a mage's school. Arjan, while I'm there, I'm going to ask her if she wants Whoa. to be saved. Wait, 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 wait. Who are you contacting? The source? The Raven Queen? What the I was suggesting. Wait, no, 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 no. I was suggesting no. maybe a saloon. Oh, you know what? That's also <laughs> a great idea. I don't need to contact planes for that one. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> one Caleb off. walks up. There. This is Gwen what we just get like when the elves looks... are the only ones who talk. Gwen just like looks at Arshan like motions like. <laughs> What? What is? Where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong, Arshan? I feel like you raise him to the best of your ability, but yeah. Caleb takes a nap. Okay. And a religion Fucking check. Elves, man. Yeah, make that religion check while you take your nappies. I got to 27. Okay, that's good. Uh, so, Caleb's going off to take a nap for a while. Is there anything that the rest of the group would like to do during this time? So, I was planning to talk to the Raven Queen. 
I don't think that's going to happen unless we go to the Rookery of Bones and I figure out a way to do that there or do some ritual where I'm bathing in blood. Which really and I can get you blood. I, I don't know if I'm okay with that much. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm just saying. Out of all, honestly, like, the fact that the bar has been set so low that, like, yeah, I could murder a couple things to get you some blood, it's a little disturbing to me now that it's happened. Um, but, uh, is, uh, I mean, I can ask Chua. She's never actually talked to the Raven Queen, but. I'm, I'm worried about bringing other people in on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want it to be spread around that, hey, we found this thing that she might really, really want. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, whatever you want to do, my, my dude. I will be there. I got you. I feel like I've been pretty passive recently. Although I am learning a lot from the whole head uh, sorceress lady. Mostly from her mutterings. Like what? I don't know what would I have learned. <laughs> um... You've got a 16 on your perception check at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so mostly from her mutterings are saying things like, um, well, it could be anything. It could be mm -hmm. a locket. It could be a sword. It could be anything. Uh, and then when you would ask, like, the fuck are you talking about? Uh, she looks at you and says, the catalyst. Uh it's there's no certainty with it it seems really dependent on what uh on who the target of this spell is mm. and then she kind of goes back to looking at it uh and that's really all that you're able to grasp uh at the time yeah uh basically the spell needs a catalyst something to like ground it in a specific person it depends on the person that you're using it on but uh it for what? more powerful people, it probably needs to be a more powerful uh, what catalyst. What spell? The one that uh, the one that Caleb wanted to do. Oh. Wait. Okay. I don't know nearly enough about the Raven Queen. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I know. A little bit, but I don't. I feel like we need something like physical that was hers or is hers or uh, is from her. So I'm concerned that we would have to maybe use Amaris in the spell, and I don't know what I would do to her. So if if I can get in contact with her and convince her uh, to do this willingly she may give us that oh shit I mean but is it gonna kill Amaris something of hers uh, I, I would assume that that wouldn't be you know Amaris Oh, okay. Well, I was just thinking something it needs to be something... Yeah, but I mean, that's the, the most physical thing that is from her. Is Amaris physical? I don't know. I don't know how gods work. I don't know how god offsprings work. I just know... I don't... Well, I guess I don't know if a lock of hair from the Raven Queen is... Oh, maybe we could use her mask. Although I don't really want to see what's under her mask. I thought she was just like a bird's nest. I what? I don't want to think about it. Cool. Anyways, yeah. All right. 
then, Calum, as you are doing your danged bestest to uh, get that rest in, um, you find yourself eventually within Saloon's library. And when you do, uh, you can see that there are more books on the shelf, which is nice as you have been bringing more books to her. Uh, so things have started to, to at least repopulate so it doesn't look as empty. Uh, but all things considered, it is still pretty vacant at this point. Uh, and you see her, uh, you see the Tome of Saloon. It still has its scratch marks on it uh, from the event that where ravens were let into the library. Uh, but as you approach, the book opens uh, and uh, you see the text appear on the page uh, that says, Greetings, Magister. I'm going to need to go through the library and start sorting the books at this rate. Uh, and the, uh, the text says, uh, have the unseen servants not been doing a good job? I mean, the last two books I left are still like right in their place and they are not even alphabetical. I, you know what? I found a book detailing a few things about Corvain and the Raven Queen. It's a children's book, but it brought up some questions. Did, did Corvain leave a Mars with you? There is a long silence from the book. And then you see the text appear that says she needed to remain safe. But where was Amaris before then? With her mother. So he did make first contact, saw what she had become. And there is a set of ellipses and then yes. We found Corvain, pulled him from the plane of negative energy. I was able to get some of his research notes. In it was the spell of soul severance. Would you think that's viable for helping the Raven Queen? It could work. But it will be dangerous. Magic such as this is no longer allowed on the plains at the risk of my daughter. Right. Would it work if you are careful? but this may have unintended consequences. We limit to nine for not just your safety, but for the safety of the realm. That's fair. In that case, then, for the safety of the realm. One casting. It'll be a make or break at that point. But it'll have to be on the Raven Queen. And the response that you get is if you must. don't see any alternatives to help her. Sh 
sure the Soul Severance is a place to jump off, but she has a Mars, and I don't know how much time we have left. And the response that you get back is for the gods time functions differently decades can seem like hours and hours can stretch into eternity I understand the need and the desire to want to keep your daughter safe. But be careful. Thank you. He's going to try and switch zones and see if he can't get into Mistra's library. Okay. Uh, make another religion check. Oh, boy. 21. 21. The Very much in the same way that the ship in Futurama moves you do not move to the library it seems like the it seems like the space that you are in shifts and moves around you until it allows you into mistress library and you are in this like near this large pit of pillows that she has you can see that the books on her shelf are neatly stacked and you hear the sound of At first you think it's bees, but then you just realize it's your cat making happy purr sounds as Mistra rolls up in her wheelchair. That's where you've been. Yeah. Last time you were here, you saw uh, Moonin actually hop onto her lap. Hi. I don't know if you seen but we've managed to recover he goes to the spiel yeah and i think that before you even acknowledge anything mr is like puts up the one hand of hers that is still active uh and just says i know it is dangerous but in doing this thing You would be righting many wrongs. You would certainly not be fixing the realms as a whole. What's done is done. What happened in the past is the past. But yours is a noble pursuit. And you understand the consequences. I just want to make sure I'm not hurting you again. And she says, after a long pause, that pain is something that you learn to deal with. It becomes a part of you. And eventually you learn to live with it. This thing that you are attempting to do. She has been in pain. Almost as long as I have. 
by a mere span of hours. She and I are similar. You're attempting to free her, correct? Yes. A part of her, a part of me is angry at what she's done to my friend, myself. But there's a part of me that's stronger. It pities her. Do not let your pity lead to a false sense of security. I've learned when dealing with deities that you should expect the unexpected. She was one of my mother's favorites before all of this began. She will be powerful. We just need to prepare for what we can prepare for. Four keeps have been... Well, we're good at improvising, if anything. <laughs> so I have seen. You know, after all of this, and if we get to the point of defeating Caius, I don't think I know what I'd do with myself. And she says, have you ever thought about teaching? I've thought a bit about going to school, actually. Try and live a somewhat normal life than what I'm used to. And what could they possibly teach you at school? Arithmetic. Calculus. She sort of like tilts her head like, yeah, sure. I'm very bad at statistics. And she sort of laughs to herself and says, I don't think you're bad with statistics. I think statistics just have a problem with you. But there's always the upswing. And That's the law of statistics. It's a long time coming. Maybe I'll teach literature. You have an awful long time to read as many books as you want. All right. Well, I'm going to go share the news that I've got the go ahead from two deities. Maybe that'll ease some minds. And Mr. Nods. Uh, and then um, you, and then she sort of just like will give you a, a hand wave as a like departing gesture and you find yourself awaking. Uh, you were a no meditating during this time or asleep? I think I need to sleep to go okay. to the library, meditation to go to Corvain. Gotcha. So, Calum is out for eight hours during all of this time. Um, is there anything that the rest of the party wanted to do during the time where Calum was asleep? If not, we can just move into the next day. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Moving into the next day, Calum awakes and is able to relay the information to the party. Uh, and it's around the time, Calum, that you were explaining, um, that you have been given this permission by, uh, by not only Mistra, but Saloon as well, uh, that you hear a, uh, exclamation 
coming from where Alindra has been uh, studying and going over this spell, uh, followed with a loud pronouncement of, uh, I got it, and then, like, giggles, and then I knew I could do it. Um, and you see Alindra, uh, hair kind of wild. It doesn't look like she's been sleeping very well while working on this, just sort of letting uh, the joy of discovery overtake her. Uh, as she uh, actually will call you over uh, and will hand you the stack of papers uh, and say, I've done it. I've translated them. I figured it out. I did add a few notes because the translation get, got a little iffy even with your primer and comprehend languages up. It, he was very wordy in a way that didn't really make sense. But I got it. I can it. relate. Yeah, I can relate to that. And she will send you, or I will send you now, boop, boop, the full spell with the notes attached to it. Uh, and at this point, I think that Alindra uh, will uh, sort of like get up. She says that she's going to go stretch her legs, take a nap, uh, and try and uh, just try and, and sleep some of this off uh, if she possibly can. Oh, did the wrong way. Boop, boop. So, yatta. So, uh, for audio, uh, for the VOD, as well as the audio cast listeners, everybody watching on Twitch, um, I'll read the spell out, uh, unless, Caleb, you wanted to read the spell aloud for all of our viewers and listeners. Sure. Soul separation, conjuration, 10th level, vocal, somatic, and material components, a catalyst of unknown description, possibly something to do with how the names became separated which is consumed as the spell resolves. Um, every coin has two sides, but coins and consciousness are not the same thing. Before casting soul separation, you will need three specific things, the names of the target and a catalyst. Uh, these names must be the target, with one name being from the life they led previously, and the second name being the life currently being led. These names are based on the place in reality which the target sees itself. Example. A dreadlord who has been corrupted by the forces of darkness may choose to take on a new name when they achieve what they believe their goal to be. The caster of the spell must know the current name of the dreadlord as well as what they were once called before taking on the forces of darkness for themselves. The caster must also have a relic reminiscent of the changed true name. In the case of a dreadlord, this may be the tome of magic that allowed them to consume, uh, commune with the power of darkness a sword used to slay their family in a fit of rage, or even a coin that was flipped before deciding to take on a quest that led him down the path of tragedy. The target may have more than one true name, but only wish for one to be their true name of power. Upon a successful casting of soul separation, the target becomes the center of a planar rift. When the rift occurs, one becomes two, as the names of power manifest into a physical body. On a fundamental level, the newfound bodies of the target cannot allow for the other's continued existence as it is a threat to their own reality. The spell fails unless one of the manifestations is defeated or otherwise dismissed within 10 minutes of casting the spell. The spell does not require concentration. Alindra's notes. At this point, there were a lot of hypothesizing about the catalyst could be used for what, and it became confusing. From what I can gather, the greater influence the target has affects catalyst as well. The author of this spell believes that it needed to be something tangible to be consumed as part of the spell. Uh, Alindra's notes, second. From what I can gather, it would look like if there was a humanoid who uh, was turned into construct, but then was able to gain the wherewithal of who they were previously. Uh, upon seeing what they become, it would fill the target with the feeling of remembering who they were, but having to acknowledge the presence that they have become while their life for a brief moment runs in parallel with itself. You would essentially be experiencing the same timeline from two different perspectives, but starting at the same point. The author suggests that this is because of an individual's connection to the weave. We are all born connected to it through some measure, so when a spirit becomes separate, perhaps their connection to the weave becomes unstable. Uh, 
Well, I guess we have all three things then. Uh, can you define what those three things are? The Raven's yeah. Queen name, Raven Queen. Cory knows her true name. And Corvain was particularly adamant about this, and he pulls out a puzzle box. The puzzle box or what's inside it? What's inside of it? Okay. Problem being, if I open it to take a look inside, it'll attract her attention again. Mm-hmm. So, a bit of a crapshoot. Well, detect magic. Yeah. Detecting magic. Uh, it is... You can sense that there is something magical deep within this puzzle box that seems like it is it is much farther in than the puzzle box would allow for as again this is a like it's almost like an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper uh, i think we described it originally as like a seven by 11 uh that has about four inches of thickness um all things considered um it is, you know that there's something inside. And that, from Corvain's notes previously, he had mentioned something about searching for a catalyst for this spell, for this ability, that you believe, anyways, would be the thing that is in here. Um, the notes of that Corvain had left did not specify whether or not he was actually successful in this. Um, but the presence within this box would you would believe you or would lead you to believe that he was. I think he found it. Well, I'm very certain he might have found it. There's something in here. So are we gonna try and bring it there? We're gonna need it for the spell. Uh, is there any way for us to know what's inside of there before we just go, like, bringing it to her? Solving it. Opening it up and looking in. I can detect magic for as long as I can. It'll just tell me what the magical components of it are. Ah. Um. Ah. Uh, okay. Is there, like, a place we can open it where it's not, like, super obvious? Cabin. Just say cabin? Oh, your cabin. Oh. I could also I, probably open I've it I've talked in. to my god a few times within Wiley's Gideon. Uh, I, is it protected from a we can ask when we get back. No, I, I mean your extra dimensional space. Your cabin. Uh, let me double check. If anything, we can always pop into a demi plane that I can create. I mean, is that going to be safe? Uh, she would need to know the contents of the demi plane that I create to actually access it. Uh, where I choose the entrance is located. And I designate, when I cast the spell, who can enter for a magnificent mansion. Potentially, I can lock her out for 24 hours. Also, while I'm wearing this, she won't know where I am. Okay. I talked to Saloon and Mistra. We've one shot at the Soul Severance. And we think we want to take that shot within your house.
we would have to have the Raven Queen there. So we'd have to make our way into the Shadowfell. Okay. We still need to go to the Rookery of Bones for you to speak with her. You're concerned that whenever we open that box, she'll, she will know and she will want it, right? Yeah. If we open that, are we sure that as soon as we step out, we aren't going to be targeted? Then we don't open it then. Or we don't open it now. We can hold off on it. Okay. Until we know for certain, well, until you've spoken with her and made sure for certain she wants to be saved, then I can pull up the mansion and open the box there. Plane shift us into... Oh, that's a lot of spells. We... If if she is, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, if she is, if she does want to be saved, and we explain this process, she may not come after us whenever we open the box. The half inside of her that's struggling might be able to keep her at bay. Both halves would want us to cast a spell, would they not? From what I can tell, yes. Then why would they sabotage this? There's a possibility. There's always a possibility. The Raven Queen, as she is now, is a collector of things. If we have something she wants, I feel like she'll do anything and come after us again. Arjan, he's like clearly thinking about this. Fun is remaining quiet. I already know that, uh, well, you've already said that casting this spell is going to would be a severe drain on you. I'm afraid the more that you expend yourself right before we do this, the worst position we're going to be in. If we time everything just right, it should be fine. Magnificent Mansion lasts for 24 hours. That'll give me enough time to recoup. So we would, that we can open this quickly. I can start working on it. Okay. We still have time. I was going to ask, how long is it to the Rookery of Bolts? But the DM has left the chair. We're technically uh... on the same plane as it. Like, um latitudinally so so uh did you did he post it and uh did he post the yeah it's in four keeps chat okay is it oh wait no sorry i can repost it in four keeps chat please, please do yeah. uh, i need to take a look at it when i'm not in gwen brain mode ah ah that that's ah. text yeah that's so many that's a, texts i read the entirety of that <laughs> Cool. How far to the Rookery of Dub Bones? From the quickest location that we can get to. 
quickest location that you could get to would be uh, the Grove of the Hermit, uh, which was Hotterize Place. Uh, and then from there, it would take roughly about a week's worth of travel. And then we also need to, like, spend the week getting to our house. Or do we have a doorknob? Uh, Calum has manufactured doorknobs okay. prior. We just need the key. Okay. Sweet. Um, so as you guys are making this plan, uh, as you had to wait roughly around eight hours for Calum or so, um, it is now nightfall and standing on the outer edge of the Mages College, uh, you are able to get a good look up. Oh, Clagan, thank you so much for the sub! You are able to get a good look up at the moon now as it is getting more full as it is towards the end of the month. Um, and looking up at it, you notice that there is a mark upon it which was not there before. Almost like there is a... Like a a point that then sort of veins outward, but the center of it, you can tell without a doubt, is a reddish color. And as the four of you look up and see this, on the hill, approaching, coming towards the city, we, as the audience, see a drow wearing what looks like naval captain's clothes with a wooden leg, a blue tiefling that you all would recognize as Doc, and the tabaxi known as Sea Glass as Oliviette arrives on the scene. And that is where we are going to call it for tonight's session. So I'd like to say thank you to everybody who decided to stop on by and join us for this wonderful session of Dungeons and or Dragons. I always have a blast whenever I can play with these fine, absolutely wonderful folk. And speaking of those fine, wonderful folk, RJ, where can we find you? What do you do? Hey, you can... Hi, I'm RJ. You can catch me here. Uh, sorry. Tired. Hi, I'm RJ. You can catch me at RJ's 22 on Twitter and Twitch, where I tune about the nerdy things in my life and sometimes stream with my friends. Uh, you can catch me here Mondays. It's Kalen, the Shatterkai Wizard. Uh, Thursdays, we've started uh, doing Elgit Magics every week. So catch me over at GGK, um, where I play Jarvis Hawk, a um, stinky onion man, stinky cheese man, um, who dabbles in the thievery of magic and found out that the college that he works for is trafficking people? That's a thing. Might have a prior relationship to said person being trafficked. He's going to unleash a werewolf on the college. A woo. Um, over on Saturdays this week is Star Power Week. So we're starting a game of fate since our overarms campaign has ended. Um, I'm playing... Wow. Uh fang uh and his guardian black tortoise it's our session zero so i don't know what's going on yet we'll find out uh sundays in the a.m catch me over at the hype goblins channel where i play Roland grandbrook a cleric sorcerer they're about to do a casino heist so pop on by for that denaykinner.com Hello, everybody. I'm LB Hackamup. You can find me at LB Hackamup on the Twitters and the Twitches, where I will be live tomorrow at 3 o'clock playing Dead by Daylight. They just released the Resident Evil uh, package, and I am going to be playing some Nemesis. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I might just revert to Bing Bong. After that, I'll be at GGK for uh, Tabletop Tuesdays with our Call of Cthulhu game. Thursdays, I uh, I will not be there, but on LB Hackamup, we are going to be doing uh, Themos Thursdays, where I think they're gonna play 
Elder Scrolls Online sounds right to me. On Friday, we are going to be playing uh, uh, Resident Evil, but the actual game, Resident Evil 6, Lauren and I will be playing that. And then on Sunday, I will be on GGK for Vison, which is a Scandinavian, uh, basically Monster of the Week game um, that takes place in the Victorian era, which is very cool. Um, and then after that, we have Playthings of the Gods, where we just had a very emotional episode. Um, one of the characters got to see her uh, mother, who gave birth, uh, who died giving birth to her. Uh, she met the Blood Queen. Uh, she met Tifa in the campaign, uh, who is the goddess, who is a god now. Uh, but uh, next, we only have one more person to be claimed, and that's our dear friend Sarah. And she, I don't think she has any idea who's going to claim her, but it's going to be fun. So that's going to be my week. Uh, check my Twitter for stuff. TheVacator.com. Hi. I'm Cyber. You can find me at CyberWolf1201 on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, I'm playing Minecraft right now. After we're done with Minecraft, we're going to play some Metroid Fusion because I, I really am excited for Metroid 5. Uh Shit, I'm very sleepy. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, YouTube, cyberworld1201.live. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Jabron TV, it's got episodes of Pokemon still coming out. Uh, a couple left, and then... <laughs> You'll have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, I'm... I'm, uh, I'm, I'm places, I'm doing things. Uh rpg stuff i'm here on mondays but hey you already found us uh i've got patreon where i make character sheets for stuff i just did a whole bunch of them for urban shadows and they dropped a new quick start so i did them all again for the new quick start so they're up to date and you can enjoy all your spooky urban shadow stuff uh, and not have it for other stuff and it's all for free so go check out the patreon get some free shit uh, as for other games, I don't have any right now. But stay tuned. DanaeKeener.com Speaking of DanaeKeener.com, hi everybody, I'm Danae Keener. You can find me at DanaeKeener.com. I do nerdy drawings, mostly related to D&D &D and a lot of things on this channel. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Danae Keener and at Flailing Wings. Uh, I have a pinned uh, tweet that tells you what my schedule is, so go check that out. Uh, DanaeKeener.com and if you've made it this far, you probably already know who I am. But if you don't, hey, Acorns, what's up? It's me, your buddy, your pal, your friend, the Indoor Adventurer, the showrunner here at twitch.tv slash Indoor Adventures. We do shows like this on Monday and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, as well as on Sundays at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash Indoor Adventures to check up on all of the VODs of each of the games that we have played up until this point, including full playthroughs of Curse of Stride, Ghost of Saltmarsh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, Tomb of Annihilation, Tyrant Security, and now our Masks the Green Sun campaign with many, many more to come. Um, if you uh, feel like helping to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures because that is where we are going to be heading off to now for our after show called Nights in the Courtyard where we answer questions not only from the community but also from each other. So if you have any questions for myself or any of these other fine folk, feel free to join us there and we will do our best to respond to your questions in kind. But with that, I would like to say once again, thank you to everybody who decided to stop on by. Thank you to these players for putting up with my bullshit once again this week. And we'll see all of you guys guys next time all right everybody bye bye